by the time he's 17. Nobody wanted no part of it. The man went broke completely. I picked him up on the streets of Broadway, and my challenge was to make the biggest comeback of his career. In the heart of Harlem, New York, during the vibrant and tumultuous 1950s, a young boy named Frankie Lyman was about to change the course of music history. Born in 1942, Lyman grew up in a world where jazz, doo-wop, rhythm, and blues were evolving, creating a rich tapestry of American music. His early life, marked by the bustling streets of Harlem, was a crucible that forged his talents. With his immense talents came great pressure to always stay on top of his career, causing his life to tragically spiral from a talented musician to his untimely death at a young age due to an overdose of drugs. Frankie's journey into music was almost predestined, growing up in a family of musicians. His father sang in a gospel group, setting the stage for Frankie's early exposure to music. The young Lyman didn't just absorb these sounds, he was poised to redefine them. It was in these early years that the seeds of his future as the frontman of the teenagers were sown. Harlem in the 1950s was a hub of cultural and artistic expression, especially for the African-American community. It was a place where music was not just entertainment, it was a way of life and a form of resistance. The streets echoed with the sounds of emerging musical genres, each telling its own story of the African-American experience. In this environment, young Frankie found his calling. He was not just a spectator, but a participant, eager to leave his mark. Well, how do you like uh, being in the entertainment world? How old are you, by the way, Frankie? 16. You're 16 years old? Oh, you're getting there, man. <laughs> uh, how do you like uh, the show business? It's fine. His neighborhood was also a place of complexity and contrast. While it thrummed with creativity and resilience, it was also a community grappling with the challenges of racial segregation and economic hardship. These realities shaped the young minds of Harlem, including Lyman's, giving their artistic expressions a depth that went beyond their years. Lyman's early exposure to music was not limited to his home. The local churches, street corners, and clubs were his classrooms where he learned the rhythms and harmonies that would later define his music. Gospel music, with its powerful vocals and emotional depth, had a particularly profound impact on him. It taught him how to convey emotion through song, a skill that would become a hallmark of his performances. Moreover, the era's social and political climate played a significant role in shaping Lyman's worldview. The 1950s were a time of great change in America. The civil rights movement was gaining momentum, challenging the status quo and fighting for equality. These societal shifts were reflected in the music of the time, which often served as a voice for those who were otherwise unheard. Lyman's music too would come to reflect these themes, resonating with a generation seeking change. As Lyman grew older, his natural talent for singing and performing became increasingly evident. He was not just another child with a dream, he had a voice that could capture the complexities of his time. His charisma and energy were undeniable, and it wasn't long before he caught the attention of those who would help catapult him to stardom. This attention gave Frankie Lyman and the teenagers a rise in a meteoric tale. In 1956, their song Why Do Fools Fall In Love catapulted them to stardom. Lyman's voice, with its unique blend of innocence and soul, resonated across the airwaves, turning the group into an overnight sensation. This hit was more than just a chart topper, it was a cultural phenomenon. It broke racial barriers, with Lyman becoming one of the first African-American teen idols. His success was not just in the notes he sang, but in the doors he opened. The creation of Why Do Fools Fall In Love was a moment of serendipity mixed with raw talent. The song, with its catchy melody and heartfelt lyrics, was a perfect showcase for Lyman's distinctive voice. It was a blend of doo-wop smooth harmonies with the youthful energy of rock and roll, a combination that was irresistible to the ears of teenagers across America. The song's appeal was universal, transcending racial and age barriers, making it a hit in both the pop and R&B charts. The Teenagers, originally known as the Premiers, were a group of friends from Edward W. Stitt Junior High School in Washington Heights. They were a mix of talent and ambition, eager to make their mark in the burgeoning world of rock and roll and R&B. With Lyman's addition to the group, they found the missing piece to their musical puzzle. His voice had a unique quality, high-pitched yet soulful, that immediately set them apart from other groups of the era. Their rise to fame was rapid. After being discovered by a local record producer, the group was quickly signed to G Records. Why Do Fools Fall In Love was one of the first songs they recorded, and its success was almost instantaneous. 
The song not only launched their careers, but also helped define the sound of a generation. Lyman's stage presence was another key factor in their success. He was a natural performer, charismatic and energetic, captivating audiences with his boyish charm. His performances were electrifying, often leaving audiences mesmerized. He had a way of connecting with the crowd, making each performance feel personal and intimate. The success of Why Do Fools Fall In Love led to a series of hits for Frankie Lyman and the teenagers. Songs like The ABCs of Love and I'm Not a Juvenile Delinquent further cemented their place in the music world. Each track showcased Lyman's evolving artistry and the group's ability to capture the essence of teenage life in the 1950s. However, with fame came new challenges. The group began touring extensively, performing in major venues across the country. The grueling schedule was demanding, especially for the young Lyman who was still in his early teens. The pressure to maintain their success and navigate the complexities of the music industry began to take its toll. Despite these challenges, Lyman and the teenagers continued to enjoy widespread popularity. They appeared on popular television shows of the time, such as The Ed Sullivan Show, further expanding their fan base. Their music was not just a commercial success, it was a cultural force influencing other artists and groups of the era. The impact of Frankie Lyman and the teenagers extended beyond their music. They were trailblazers in a segregated America, breaking down racial barriers in the music industry. Their success paved the way for other African-American artists, challenging the status quo and opening doors that had previously been closed. Frankie Lyman and the teenagers stood as a testament to the power of talent and perseverance. Their journey from a group of school friends to national sensations was a key part of the tapestry of American music history, a narrative that reflects the dreams and aspirations of a generation. Fame, especially at a young age, came with a heavy price. Frankie, thrust into the limelight, faced immense pressure. The industry's expectations were high and the societal norms of the 1950s America were rigid. Lyman had to navigate these as a child star, a challenge that would prove overwhelming. As the decade neared its end, musical tastes began to shift. Rock and roll was on the rise and doo-wop's popularity waned. This change marked the beginning of a challenging phase in Lyman's career. The rapid ascent to fame meant that Lyman and the teenagers were constantly in the public eye. Their every move was scrutinized and they were held to standards that were often unrealistic for teenagers. The group, particularly Lyman, was under immense pressure to maintain their success and image. This scrutiny was not just from fans and the media, but also from the music industry, which often placed commercial success above the artist's well-being. Lyman's personal life also began to feel the strain of his fame. The constant touring and recording schedule left little time for a normal teenage life. He missed out on typical adolescent experiences, instead living a life that was far removed from that of his peers. This isolation from normalcy made it difficult for him to relate to others his age, leading to a sense of alienation. The fame that Lyman experienced was a double-edged sword. On one hand, it brought him unprecedented success and opportunities. He was able to break barriers and achieve things that few African-American artists had before him. On the other hand, it brought intense scrutiny and expectations that were difficult to manage, especially for someone so young. The music industry in the 1950s was a challenging landscape for artists, particularly for those who were young and African-American. The industry was rife with exploitation, with artists often having little control over their careers or finances. Lyman and the teenagers, like many of their contemporaries, were not immune to these practices. They often found themselves at the mercy of record labels and managers, who were more concerned with profits than the artists' welfare. As musical tastes changed, Lyman and the teenagers struggled to adapt. The emergence of rock and roll as a dominant genre meant that doo-wop was no longer as popular as it once was. This shift posed a significant challenge for the group as they tried to find their place in the evolving music scene. Their attempts to evolve their sound and stay relevant were met with mixed results, adding to the pressure they were already facing. The group's dynamic also began to change during this time. The success and stress started to affect their relationships with each other. Disagreements and tensions arose, which were exacerbated by the external pressures they were facing. These internal conflicts, coupled with the changing music industry, signaled the beginning of a difficult period for the group. Despite these challenges, Lyman's talent remained undeniable. He continued to be a captivating performer, with a voice that could still enchant audiences.
However, the innocence and joy that had characterized his earlier performances were increasingly overshadowed by the weight of fame and the complexities of growing up in the public eye. As Lyman navigated these challenges, his journey became a cautionary tale about the price of popularity. Lyman's popularity made his personal life as complex as his career. His relationships, particularly his marriages, became as talked about as his music. He married three times, with each marriage intersecting with different phases of his career and personal life. These relationships, while part of his personal life, had a significant impact on his public image and career, intertwining with his identity as an artist. Frankie Lyman's first marriage, at the tender age of 15, was to Elizabeth Waters, this union was mired in controversy, not just because of Lyman's age, but also due to the legal issues that surrounded it. The marriage was later annulled, but it set the tone for Lyman's tumultuous personal life. This early marriage was a stark indicator of how Lyman's rapid ascent to fame had thrust him into adult situations far beyond his years, complicating his personal development and understanding of relationships. His second marriage to Zola Taylor of the Platters was equally sensational. Taylor was an established artist in her own right, and their relationship was the subject of much media attention. This marriage, too, was fraught with challenges. The pressures of being in a high-profile relationship, combined with their respective careers, created a volatile mix. Their union was a reflection of the complexities of managing personal relationships in the public eye, particularly at a young age. Lyman's third marriage, to Amira Eagle, was perhaps his most stable relationship. However, it too was not without its difficulties. By this time, Lyman's career had begun to decline and he was grappling with various personal issues. This marriage was a period of relative calm in Lyman's otherwise turbulent life, but it was also a time when the consequences of his earlier fame and lifestyle began to manifest more profoundly. Each of Lyman's marriages reflected not just his search for love and stability, but also the broader challenges he faced in his life. They were intertwined with his identity as a public figure, often overshadowing his musical achievements. His relationships were scrutinized and dissected by the public and the media, adding another layer of complexity to his already complicated life. Moreover, these relationships were indicative of the broader societal norms and expectations of the time. The 1950s and 1960s were periods of significant social change in America. The norms around marriage, relationships, and celebrity were evolving, and Lyman's marriages were, in many ways, a microcosm of these changes. They challenged the traditional notions of marriage and relationships, particularly in the context of celebrity and youth. Lyman's romantic life also had a significant impact on his music. His experiences in love and relationships provided material for his songs, influencing both the lyrics and the emotional depth of his music. His personal life, with its highs and lows, was reflected in his art, making his music more relatable and poignant. However, the constant media attention on his personal life also had its downsides. It often detracted from his musical talents and achievements. The focus on his romantic escapades sometimes overshadowed his contributions to music, reducing his public persona to tabloid headlines. Frankie Lyman's romantic life is a complex tapestry of love, fame, and the challenges of growing up in the public eye. His relationships were more than just personal choices. They were intertwined with his career, public image, and the changing societal norms of his time. Frankie Lyman's journey through fame was not just marked by musical highs and romantic entanglements, but also by a tragic descent into substance abuse. This chapter of his life paints a somber picture of the pitfalls of early fame and the destructive impact of addiction. Lyman's introduction to narcotics occurred at a young age influenced partly by the environment in which he found himself as a rising star. The music industry of the 1950s and 1960s, especially in the circles of rock and roll and rhythm and blues, was often rife with substance use. For Lyman, a young and impressionable teenager, the exposure to such an environment proved devastating. The pressure to perform and maintain his star status only exacerbated his struggles. Lyman found himself caught in a vicious cycle, where the demands of his career and his personal battles fed into each other. The more he achieved, the greater the pressure became, and the more he turned to substances as a coping mechanism. His addiction had a profound impact on his career. It affected his ability to perform and record, leading to a noticeable decline in the quality of his music. The vibrant, energetic young star, who had captivated audiences with his voice and charisma, was gradually overshadowed by the effects of his substance abuse. The impact of Lyman's addiction was not just professional, but also deeply personal. 
It strained his relationships with family, friends, and colleagues. Those who had once been close to him found it increasingly difficult to connect with the person he had become. His struggle with addiction became a barrier, isolating him from those who cared about him and who might have offered support. Lyman's battle with addiction also mirrored the broader societal issues of the time. The 1950s and 1960s were periods of significant social and cultural change in America. Issues of drug use and addiction were becoming more prominent, reflecting the complexities and challenges of the era. Lyman's struggles were, in many ways, indicative of the larger challenges facing society. The music industry's response to Lyman's addiction was also telling. Rather than support and intervention, there was often a tendency to overlook or exploit his struggles. The focus was on maintaining his productivity as an artist, often at the expense of his well-being. This approach was reflective of the industry's broader attitudes towards the health and welfare of its stars, particularly those who were young and vulnerable. Lyman's descent into addiction was a tragic turn in his life story. It highlighted the darker side of fame and the music industry. His struggle with substance abuse was a stark contrast to the bright, promising start of his career. It served as a cautionary tale about the dangers of early fame and the importance of support and guidance for young artists. As Lyman's career and personal life spiraled downwards, his story became less about his musical talents and more about the challenges he faced. His battle with addiction overshadowed his achievements, defining much of his later life and career. It was a sad chapter in the life of a once bright star, a chapter that would have a lasting impact on his legacy. Frankie Lyman's life was not only marked by personal and professional struggles, but also by complex legal battles that significantly impacted his career and legacy. These legal issues revolved around his music royalties, contracts, and the rights to his songs, entangling him in a web of litigation that lasted for years. The legal battles began in earnest following the peak of Lyman's career. As his popularity waned, the financial rewards of his early success became a contentious issue. The royalties from his hit songs, particularly Why Do Fools Fall In Love, were substantial, but Lyman saw only a fraction of these earnings. The contracts he had signed as a young, inexperienced artist were heavily skewed in favor of the record labels and publishers. These contracts, often complex and exploitative, were a common issue for artists in the 1950s and 1960s. Young artists, especially those from minority backgrounds, were frequently taken advantage of by industry executives. Lyman's case was a prime example of this practice. He had signed away rights to his music without fully understanding the implications, a decision that would have long-lasting effects on his financial situation. The legal disputes over royalties were further complicated by Lyman's personal life, particularly his multiple marriages. Each of his wives claimed a stake in his earnings, leading to a tangled legal situation. The disputes over his estate involved not only his former partners, but also record labels and publishing companies. These battles were not just about money, they were about the recognition and ownership of Lyman's contributions to music. Lyman's involvement in these legal battles took a toll on him both financially and emotionally. The constant litigation was a source of stress and frustration, a far cry from his early days of fame and success. He found himself fighting for what he believed was rightfully his, a struggle that consumed much of his time and energy. The legal issues surrounding Lyman's royalties also highlighted broader issues in the music industry. They shed light on the exploitative practices of record labels and publishers, particularly towards young and inexperienced artists. Lyman's battles were emblematic of the struggles faced by many artists of his era, who found themselves at the mercy of an industry that often prioritized profits over fairness. Moreover, these legal battles had a significant impact on Lyman's legacy. The disputes over his music rights and royalties overshadowed his his musical achievements. His legacy became as much about the legal issues as it was about his contributions to music. The battles over his estate continued long after his death, a testament to the complicated nature of his career and the music industry as a whole. Lyman's legal struggles also served as a cautionary tale for other artists. They highlighted the importance of understanding the business side of the music industry and the need for fair and equitable contracts. His story underscored the need for artists to be aware of their rights and to seek proper representation in business dealings. As Lyman's legal battles raged on, they painted a picture of a talented artist caught in a web of exploitation and legal disputes. His struggle for control over his music and earnings was a sad part of his life, one that reflected the darker aspects of fame and the music industry. Frankie Lyman's life, filled with soaring highs and profound lows, 
came to a tragic and premature end. On February 27, 1968, Lyman was found dead from a heroin overdose, a stark and somber end to a life that had once held so much promise. He was only 25 years old. Lyman's death was not just the loss of a talented artist, it was a poignant reminder of the potential dangers of early fame and the destructive power of addiction. His passing sent shockwaves through the music industry and among his fans, marking a sad end to a career that had begun with such brightness and hope. The news of his death brought a renewed interest in his music and the legacy he left behind. It prompted reflections on the nature of fame, the vulnerabilities of young artists, and the responsibilities of the industry that propelled them to stardom. Lyman's life story, marked by its tragic end, became a cautionary tale about the pitfalls that can accompany early success. In the years following his death, Lyman's influence influence on the music industry and his role in shaping the doo-wop genre became more widely recognized. His contributions to music, though overshadowed by his personal struggles and untimely death, continue to resonate with artists and fans alike. Frankie Lyman's legacy extends far beyond his tragic life story. He left an indelible mark on the music industry, influencing generations of artists. His unique voice and style helped lay the groundwork for the development of rock and roll and pop music. Despite his short career, Lyman's influence is evident in the evolution of boy bands and young solo artists. His ability to capture the hearts of a diverse audience broke racial barriers in a time of segregation, paving the way for future African-American artists. His songs, especially hits like Why Do Fools Fall In Love, continue to resonate with audiences, covered and sampled by numerous artists across various genres. Lyman's story, while marked by its tragic elements, also serves as a testament to the enduring power of music. His contributions to the doo-wop genre and the music industry as a whole remain a significant part of his legacy. He is remembered not just for the challenges he faced, but also for the joy and innovation he brought to music. In retrospectives and musical tributes, Lyman is often celebrated for his pioneering role in the music industry. His influence is seen in the way artists approach vocal harmonies and in the continued popularity of the boy band format. His life, though fraught with difficulties, continues to inspire discussions about artist welfare and the protection of young talents in the entertainment industry. Frankie Lyman's legacy is a complex tapestry of musical genius, personal struggle, and historical significance. His story continues to captivate and educate, serving as a powerful reminder of the impact one individual can have on the world of music. The life of Frankie Lyman is a poignant and multifaceted tale that encapsulates the extremes of fame, the volatility of the music industry, and the human cost of early success. His journey from a young talent to a star whose light dimmed too soon is a narrative that continues to resonate. Lyman's life serves as both a cautionary tale and a source of inspiration, reminding us of the fragility of youth and the enduring power of music. His legacy, marked by groundbreaking achievements and personal struggles, offers valuable lessons about the importance of guidance and support for young talents in the entertainment industry. It also highlights the need for fair practices within the music business, especially concerning young and vulnerable artists. Lyman's story is not just about the rise and fall of a music star, it's about the human aspects of fame and the complexities of navigating success at a young age. His story, though rooted in the past, continues to have relevance in today's world, offering insights and lessons that are as important now as they were during his lifetime. Frankie Lyman's narrative is compelling in the history of music, one that will continue to be studied, discussed, and remembered for many years to come. That's it for today. Have an amazing day and see you all next time.